those stealthy priests that wore the color uh, commonly associated with the term. The Black Wolf Clan. The Black Eagle Clan. The Black Hawk Clan. The Black Foot Clan. Right? The Black Cougar Clan, which we know today is the Black, Black Panther Clan. All these different clans are the clans that's fighting the actual conjure war of self-identity lost in a contract, a blood oath, than the secondary constitution that's kept in the George Washington Masonic Memorial was written in the blood of the chief Crispus Atticus in order to keep us under the conjure spell. It's the same as the continuation of the ancient spell of Kingu that's put us in this Kali Yuga. When you break one, you break them all. It's cycles within cycles, and if you don't ever break out the cycles, you're stuck in an infinity loop, forever repeating the same bullshit over and over until you get it right. The exit from the infinity loop is where the pieces all meet in the middle. On both sides. It's an A on this side. Six over the nine makes an eight. 69 is balance. This is why they say he stood on Pisces and Vesica Pisces. It's the same thing. Two water signs. One is two cra one is a crab and one is two fish. And the crab is a crip. Unless he a crip on the flip, then he's a pyro with the sea on his side. It's two tribal knocks in the code that we have to figure out. And all it is, the fish is, I will make you fisher of men. Well, you first got to make me a fish hook. So King James bent the I into a J to conceal who Isis was, so we will be perpetually confused. Because if you straighten out the J, it's going to go right back to Isis. That means it's going to be returned back to mama. So you teach a man to fish, and he can eat for a lifetime. I'm a fishing motherfucker. My mama taught me to fish at an early age. The, the ship that... narrative doesn't make sense. The slave ship narrative is, is it defies all logic. Mm -hmm. They said we was packed in the hull of the ship like sardines, man to man, foot to head. Mm -hmm. Right? Mm -hmm. And the construction that they was using for them wooden ships back then, that's a gas chamber in two days. You got to remember, you got nine seafaring people on the ocean. What happened to you when you get seasick? Don't you get nauseous? Oh, absolutely. So that means you're going to be throwing up. So it's going to be vomit. You're going to be full of vomit down there because there's a whole bunch of people that's not seafaring. Right? Then... To take it a step further, you're going to have bathrooms. Ain't no bathrooms. <laughs> Same question. Where they shitting and pissing at? Back then, they used to shit on something called the poop deck. And this is where you get your term swab the deck. That means go clean the bathroom, motherfucker. There's shit everywhere. But if you got that many people shackled and chained, you can't run bathroom breaks enough for everybody to get relief. So it's going to be a whole lot of buildup of fecal matter and urine in the hull of the ship. Anybody that didn't smell hot piss know that that ammonia going to be kicking. You ever smell a bottle of ammonia? Mm. Yes. Okay, imagine that shit everywhere. Mm. It's a gas chamber. This is this is supposed to be a 90-day journey. It's only a two-week journey from Europe to New York. Y'all got to pay attention. Right. It's a two-week journey from Europe to New York. It's a 90-day journey from Africa to the islands where they call the Middle Passage. In the 1500s. That don't make no fucking sense. That's a convenient story to separate your identity away from the land. 
it's more likely that the people on the slave ship died off than the people from the land died off. Basic logistics and basic critical thinking would tell you that. If we in the open air, they in the closed chamber. It's a difference. Right? So some of us probably did die off from the diseases that the Europeans brought. They died off on this land. Why not? We and still dying from shit that they brought. Well, we ain't stopped dying from the shit that they brought if we still here. I'm Mississippi clay dirt walking. I know where I'm from. My roots go right down that Mississippi River. Mississippi red clay dirt walking. You can smear me with it, and if you didn't know it, that I was smeared with it, we, you, you wouldn't even know I wasn't. I was had dirt on me. I know where I'm from. It's not a secret. And the earth tells me where I'm from by the resonance of what we call the nativity. The nativity of the Christ, the anointing. The anointing is the oils. The oils are in the ground that's telling us where we come from. But we want to go with the narratives that other people tell us who we is rather than following what our ancestors told us. Here's the thing. Go to the roots. Hmm. Fiddler is telling the people when Kunta Kente get there, this is the African Guinea nigga. See, we don't know nothing about no Africans. We was already here. Why is this in the slave movie? Why is this fiddler saying we don't know nothing about no Africans? Hmm. I remember that too. Right? So they telling you, but they still shrouded in a fairy tale. So we can, we don't have a personal issue with Africans. No. Because they got done the same way we did. But I can tell you this. In the 1800s, they took some other some of us and set up a whole nation over there called Liberia. Liberia, I knew you was gonna say it. You better talk. You better talk. So we know they took us over there, and we know that all of the Africans that I didn't talk to, none of them have it in their historical record of mass amounts of people being extracted from the land. It don't exist. But what you do have is 10 to 12 here and there being snatched up by Arab slave traders mm. before they r rally the troops. Right? That's been going on long before the slave trade. The Arabs started that shit, the finance it, and Europe carried it out. But we didn't know that the Europeans carrying it out looked like us because they whitewashed them in the history books so we could always look at the pale face as the guilty culprit. When they just used the pale face to keep us out of institutions. So Big Mama said, don't worry about it. Bring them all over here, the ones they don't want, and we're going to educate them and send them in to overrun their institutions and put the secrets out in the open. So when Noble Ali came, he gave them the green light. What happened? We had something called the spiritualist movement in the 1900s where they was doing the rapping and tapping on the tables to tell us in the future what was going on in the past. So when we picked up hip hop, we started rapping and tapping on the tables and spitting the past out in the present. It's the old conjure. That's from New Orleans. That's the new, the whole rapping conjure is a New Orleans based conjure from root magic in the deep woods of the motherfucking Mrs. I mean, Louisiana Bayou. That's where it come from with the old juke joints. This is where jazz come from. Rock and roll, green, uh, bluegrass, country music. It all comes from that conjure because we always believe in putting the message on the drum. And all of them needed the drum, except for Scott Joplin. He used the piano because that's what they brought with him when they came from Europe. 
<clears throat> they didn't never expect that we would be able to learn to master the piano and come up with our own music that made that classical music sound like shit. So Scott Joplin said, let me ever go at it. And they called it ragtime. Mm. And it was the birth of the music industry selling his sheet music for a penny a page. And he wasn't getting a dime of it. Oh, sharecropper agreements. You created and we going to capitalize on it. Benjamin Franklin discovered electricity with a key on the kite and he was he didn't get fried. Make that shit make sense. Because he sure would have been fricassee. He would have been roast cracker. <laughs> if that motherfucking lightning would have hit the key with that string on there. He forgot lightning followed the path of least resistance. The key becomes a conductor and the electricity shoot both ways up the stream. And we supposed to believe that shit. The first automobiles being made over here, they credited to a pale face, but it was brothers who was already driving cars in the 1800s first. They the ones who was creating those crank up engines. They got the steel, got the flyers. You can find the flyers from the brothers' cars that was back then. They want us to not know who we is, but we always know our handiwork if we the salt of the earth. What do salt do to your food? Don't it balance out all the flavors? Mm. Okay, so what do we use to balance out the society? We use arts and entertainment. And this is how they brought the sharecropper agreement into the entertainment industry. So they can capitalize on the natural expression of the people and monetize that shit for themselves and they self gain. We, we, we do have the, every race in the genome of the dark mother. Right? What we call races, they're not races. They, tribal um, genetic types, right? But the term race is applied to the game of the gods and trying to race to the conclusion of the closing of the age. So um, when we use in the races in terms like melding pot, um, one drop of blood, stuff like this, they're telling us in code what's taking place so this takes us to what bobby hemmick calls the great debauchery where the natural uh, evolutionary process of humans was interrupted by scientists in the laboratory that caused genetic mutations you're going to notice in about 20 years that mutations are going to start to decrease because all of those mutations now are under scrutiny by the mitochondrial, who is the factor that clears up genetic defects in Y chromosomes and X chromosomes. But the Y chromosome specifically, because a lot of the defects came in riding on the Y chromosome based on what was done in the laboratory. They altered the genetic structure of humans to keep them perpetual slaves and never have a right to a sin to higher consciousness. What happens when they try to ascend to higher consciousness is the body begins to deteriorate and break down. <clears throat> Excuse me. A prime example is Stephen Hawkins. He was only left brain. He never activated his right brain <clears throat> because his intellect was so high. He didn't have the right brain to offset the rapid firing of the um, neurons in the space of the silver liquid. The silver liquid is the liquid that your cerebral spinal fluid pump at birth. As you develop, you're supposed to develop into where you're pumping a uh, right brain, left brain, simultaneous pump. 
and draws up what's called the sacred secretion from the root chakra all the way up to the brain. This in turn make the silver liquid become gold in color. And when it does that, the right brain abstract creativity of the mother side of the brain in the queen's chamber sits the pineal gland that received the psychic impressions from source. So what they did in the laboratory with the people is turned off right brain reactivity by genetic splicing of the DNA. When they done that, now we are under a judgment from prime creator for violating the rules in the free will universe. The will of a group of people has been undermined by scientists in the laboratory that prevents them from uh, natural rights of ascension. In the same text that tell us about this genetic defects, the Sumerian tablets, it also tells us that the remedy for the problem is to give them the blood of the gods. They ain't talking about the men, they're talking about the sisters. Because she is the, gen the genome corrective analysis comes through the mitochondria. But she first have to assess the genome. Right. And assessing the genome when at the close of the age, you get the source codes in. They already came in. The women now holding the source codes that will correct all of the defects that was created in the laboratory. So now everybody will have the equal rights of ascension. And this is why they told us the Jesus story the way that they told it to us, because the blood of the Christ is the blood of the anointed because Christ means anointed. And the anointed ones are the original dark mothers of the earth. So this is why all of these people are coming over here, because this is where source blood was is at its highest potency on the planet. The tribes from this land. And we also had pre intermix with the Asians and the Africans so we already had they source they genetic codes too right so now when the new people come they need the drop of blood in order to break the cycles of the infinity loop and this is the, the conquest of the great debauchery in the experiments done on people in laboratories that was repugnant to the great mother. The story is written about it in hieroglyphics, right? And do you believe that the birth of civilization, that humanity, humans, or whatever, that they came from one place in one region? It was spontaneous around the planet. Okay, I just wanted to be clear. Yeah, the women have always been here. The men are the newest. Are the newest of the genders. Yes, yes. Women used to produce with parthogenesis mm -hmm. until a collection of women decided to produce men as a counterbalance. Mm -hmm. Let's go to cut to the chase on the DNA test. Okay, the fine purpose. print say it's for entertainment purposes only. Purposes only. <laughs> so the, the DNA test says it's for entertainment purposes early only. Right. So that means that whatever it is, if it's for entertainment purposes only, it can be altered to fit the narrative that they're using as the entertainment. It's like wrestling being the outcome is determined. It don't matter what happened in the match, the outcome is determined. <clears throat> so the 21 and me, if you go back to Henry Louis Gates, he told you when when Oprah went to Africa, she said on the news broadcast that she was Zulu. His friend called him up while they was doing her DNA test. Since they making it up as they go anyway, this is literally what he said. Since we making it up as we go anyway, just make her Zulu. And when her DNA test came out, they found out she was Zulu. They got to tell you what they doing. They got to put it in the public domain so you can locate it so that you can show what you're talking about when you tell people that it's an entertainment and the entertainment is the slave narrative. 
to disassociate the people. It's the same with reparations. The only reparations we want is to get our shit back because they we back for everything they owe, but they just so happen to owe us everything. And they won't have nothing to give us for reparations after that. Right? They all fabricated, built up on a legal fiction, a house of cards. And when you get the root card, the whole house comes tumbling down, fruit of the poison tree doctrine and law. Right? They drew up those titles to the land because we didn't sell land no way. Mm. We didn't need no titles to the land. We already knew that the um, clan mothers governed the land and who settles where. And they had conventions. This is where you get your Congress from. Congress is a Congress of mayors. The mayors is town mothers. So they would go to a meeting once a year and they would say, okay, this chief got 2,000 followers, but he's still under this other chief's jurisdiction. We need his own town. So he was get appointed to plot of land to settle based upon the natural formation of the land. Your land is between this mountain, this land of trees, this river, and this row of rocks. That's your town. That's your land. You go take your 2,000 people, separate from the chief that you under, because y'all don't see eye to eye to prevent warfare from up, uh, uh, uprising in the family. So then they go and get the uh, alignment, and then the resources goes with them to facilitate a successful settlement. This is not what we was doing before Columbus came. We got to go back to what we were doing before the enemy came if we want our shit back. Because the enemy gave us a system and told us if we use his system, he'll fight for us. And the only thing he'd been fighting is us. You can't fight for us and fight us at the same time. That don't even make sense. That's called an oxymoron. You can't fight for us and fight us at the same time. They call us um, dependent nations in a constitutional law, outlaw tribes, uh, savage tribes and nine treaty tribes are all of the terms they use to describe the tribes that didn't want to play their game. But we have to use our system. We can't use that system. It's designed to keep us forever in slavery. On these lands went over into that continent. So yep. it's very possible that when they took the test, they, you know, because now they're considered Africans. But that that's, that's possible they, because they, they created a whole country called Liberia. But right, you, they, so they, they not telling people they from Liberia. They telling you from Sierra Leone, you from Ghana. Right, right. You right, from right, Somalia. Nigeria. They ain't telling nobody they from Liberia, Sierra. Not. I mean, from, um, from Liberia, where we do have genetic links to. That just so conveniently to skip all the DNA tests. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> because it's just they, they give you a part, but never can tell you how you connect it. Like Delsonia says, where's the person and the people that you are connected with? Not not a not like a little portions, different portions. Look. Never connect to it. If you know, if you know how DNA works. Once you get past like three generations, you have too many ancestors to tie you down to one. It double every generation back. Your two parents had four parents. Your four parents, grandparents had eight parents. Them eight parents had 16. It doubles as you go back. If you go back 100 years or 200 years, you talking about 64 to 100 and some ancestors. Which one is they talking about was the African? Facts. I threw that in to try to help them a little bit, but I'm with you with it. Um, right. So DNA don't work like that. The DNA that they read only expresses what they call a phenotype. Mm -hmm. A general descriptive appearance that's on a specific code of the DNA. And they assume because you have the same physical characteristics as somebody on the other side of the water that this will fit the narrative to disassociate them from the land. We ain't that dumb no more. And, and we used to be. Yes. We used to be, but we ain't that dumb no more. Hmm. 
it's too many of us aware that we from over here because we feel it in our bones. We don't need nobody to tell us. The earth talk to us if we listen and tell us if we belong here. If we don't belong here, we get restless until we find where we belong. We still going to always be tribes. Tribes mean families. We can always break up into extended family groups. It's just the nature of who we are. This is why when we start tribing up in the 60s and 70s, they start labeling the tribes as gangs because most people don't know gang mean tribe. Right? So we just need to first close down the old system and nature will put us back in the proper structure as the tribal mothers step up and be recognized and the families will begin to remember shit they don't know why they remember it we know everything already about the land talk to us telling us what took place but we have to get back into the energy where we receptive to the messages that the land is producing to tell us the whole story the animals reenact the story uh, the trees like most of us <clears throat> a high percent of us don't know that you used to be able to walk the treetops from Florida to, to damn near Texas without ever climbing down out of a tree getting on the ground. But they chopped all the trees down because it was wartime. And they took all of the cypress trees out of Florida, which was the giant trees that covered the land of flowers. This is all researchable information. That was the side effect of the Gullah Wars. They started gator baiting our babies because we used to ride alligators and sick alligators on their ass in the, in the bottom of the uh, canopy on the ground in the swamp and used to attack them from the trees in the top and they didn't have a chance. <clears throat> so it was all derived out of warfare. The genetics, the genetic information that they feeding us back from their DNA testing is all warfare. We can either win the war or we can choose to take sides with the enemy. Well, using a court system only gives them jurisdictional context to assert jurisdiction under the color of law. We don't need them for nothing. We don't need their courts, which was established. The first bar association was established in uh, Savannah, Georgia, about 1863, 1864, <clears throat> by order of King George to usurp the tribal courts. <clears throat> we still have tribal courts over here, but because we believe they more legitimate than we are, <clears throat> we only participate in a system. There's nothing they can do once we get back to our own culture. The land was used to facilitate farms to produce foodstuffs to take care of the family wherever they was at throughout the country. We used to ship food from Big Mama House to the villages. Well, we call them towns and cities now, right? But they were just little settlements of people some of them had castles some of them had huge buildings and some of them had small houses and huts uh log cabins but it was what we choose to do with our settlement and that was part of us receiving settlements is being able to control our own destiny <clears throat> I think I understand what you're saying. So when you have the blood rights is a member of the royal families of the land, you become what's called a pretender to the throne. And your life works becomes the foundation that you build as you go on a campaign to alert the rest of the heirs on the land that you assert in your jurisdictional right to restore the land. And so the campaign is a process called the redemption process that we follow where we use the oral tradition. This is why I use social media because it's all time stamped and dated in archivable format for the purposes of public notices. So whatever 
<clears throat> I'm putting in the public domain, no matter who show I'm on right now, I'm also asserting my rights to restore the land back to the original people, wherever they at on the land. It don't matter where you at, because once we get it back, the family will break, will have family reunions again, centered around one of the grandmamas, we would call big mamas. And they would set up the family um, trust, which is your family banking system, in order to allocate resources to the members of the family. And <clears throat> even the tribes that don't think from referring to them will receive their tribal rights back under our system that they were denied under the corporate fiction that was the interim government for the time of war. That's over with. They closed May uh, March the first, right? So, well, that's the scheduled day of closing. They're supposed to have been closed, but they have no uh, they have no bill on the table to try to extend their uh, legal fiction any longer than March the first. So, we will be um, having a national Mardi Gras next year. <clears throat> um, Trump announced it as a 250 year celebration right which takes us to February the 25th which, and it's 25 on two flips which is two quarters two quarters is 50 flip and you have 50 on each side that's 200 um, which is the four corner shuffle to put everything back in its proper order. This balance on both sides, two quarters on this side, two quarters on that side, which turns out to be four sevens, which is four masters. So it's all about getting back to um, our own um, systems so that we can be self-determining and autonomous and we can make all of those decisions at the leadership summits about who going to settle where and how we going to tribe up. We got the right to restore our cultural heritage any way we see fit without the, anybody's outside opinion even being given a fuck about. It's, it's not about what 